Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He assembled he summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel. They presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Dear Christian friends, brothers and sisters in God's family, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You probably learned that pledge of allegiance already in elementary school many years ago. But why? Did you know it was already in 1892 that President Benjamin Harrison had been reading through a children's magazine and found this and then he made the command to all the schools that they should put that in their curriculum. And why did he, what was the reason why he wanted that? It was because he wanted the children to have loyalty, faithfulness to their country and to learn that. In Joshua chapter 24, we also see a pledge of allegiance, but not to the flag of America. There's not a group of children standing under the stars and stripes and pledging their allegiance to the flag, but rather to the people of Israel who are standing before the Lord. Uh, Joshua, their leader, had gathered all the people together before the Lord. The elders, the leaders, the judges, the officials, we're told we're all there. And then Joshua himself made this wonderful pledge. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We take a look at that pledge today as we take as our theme, the Christian's Pledge of Allegiance. As we first of all see that it is built on the rock solid foundation of the Lord. And secondly, it is a strong commitment to serve the Lord. Now our text takes us back a long time ago, into a different place than America and to a different nation. The place is Canaan, and the nation is Israel. And this nation, God had brought into the promised land, and now there's these words from, uh, from uh, Joshua to remind them of what it was all about. Because their neighborhood, you would say, is a very dangerous neighborhood especially for their spiritual welfare. We might think, well, those Israelites certainly didn't have it as bad as we have it here in our day and age. I mean, there was no legalized gay marriages. There were no drugs in their school systems. There were no, uh, no internet porn to get into. Uh, there weren't all the murders and killings in the streets at that time. There were no TV shows that were... Uh, making a mockery of those in authority or of God's plan for marriage. Well, Satan was just as alive and well back then also. And the religions of those times were pretty corrupt. They had children's sacrifices. They had idolatry. They had a lot of drug, I should say alcohol use, overuse, and a lot of uh, sex, sinful sex that was connected to it. 
And so what makes you feel good wasn't something just for our day and age, it was also for that time and place also. Satan tries to de destroy any faithfulness that anyone has to the Lord in connection with the Lord. But the Lord had given his people two great leaders. One was Moses, and he was the one God chose to lead his people out of their slavery in Egypt and through that hot desert for 40 years. Moses passed away, and Joshua took over. And now Joshua's at the end of his life. He's been living for 110 years. And he reminds the people of this merciful God as he's giving them his farewell speech, you might say, and how the Lord had brought them out of their oppressive uh, slavery in Egypt, how he'd gotten them through that Red Sea and through that hot desert sand, how he had provided for them. And now Joshua gives, comes to an emotional conclusion. He says to his people, there's a choice you have to make and there can be no sitting on the fence. Are you going to build your lives on the God of this land or the one who has gotten you out of Egypt, who fed and clothed you for 40 years in that desert, the one who gave you this land gave you cities that you did not build, gave you crops that you did not plant, that scattered the enemies away and won one victory after another. Who will you serve? The one who forgives you all your sins and leads you to heaven? Well, as far as I am concerned, he said, as far as me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. What a perfect pledge of allegiance for any Christian's life. Those words didn't just pop out of Joshua's mouth. From along for many years, his Christian leader learned about serving and being faithful to his Lord. Even when life was not easy, when he had to face many battles against fierce enemies, when he had the burdens of leadership, of being married and raising a family, dealing with his own sinfulness, Joshua learned over and over again what it meant to have his Savior God by his side and on his side. The Lord was the rock-solid foundation of his life and of his home. I wish that could be said of every, every life and every home. but simply is not. And how great it is if we can make him a solid rock and foundation of our lives and our homes. If your life is in trouble, if your life seems to be crumbling around you, if you find yourself drifting away, how you need to hang on to this rock solid foundation and run to that cross of Jesus Christ and listen to what he has to offer to you. Listen to him speak to you. And what does Jesus say? He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Isn't that the picture of every Christian life? Hearing God's word and putting them into practice, that's what Joshua did. And if by the grace of God that is a description of your life and you want a happier home and a stronger family, then you need to make sure that dust never collects on your Bibles at home and that the Bibles that tell you about this almighty God who comes to you, who has loved you with an everlasting love and who has made you his child, become a member of his family, looking forward to the time that he takes you to be with him up in heaven. Our Lord has got to be the rock-solid foundation of our life and of our homes, not just for this life, but also for the life to come. We are simple human beings, and we carry a lot of baggage, a lot of weaknesses, a lot of shortcomings. All of us, moms and dads, husbands and wives, teens and, and tots, married, unmarried, we all are sinful human beings, and we have the potential to make a real shambles of our lives. And that's how, why it's so important 
that we have Jesus as our Savior. He died for every one of our sins and has forgiven every one of us. And he wants to bless us. He wants to protect us from all the evils of our days. And he wants to take us to live with him in heaven. How does that happen? It also happens when we make a firm commitment to him. Now, Joshua says, as for me and my household, there's his commitment. We will serve the Lord. Is there a higher goal that we could ever have? Now, Joshua talks about making a choice. And it's not making a choice of whether you believe or not, but it's because we cannot choose to believe. It's the Holy Spirit that puts faith into our hearts. But once we have faith, we have a lot of choices, don't we? Choices to serve the Lord or not. Choices to, to grow in our faith. Choices to, well, see how much money we give to the Lord or not give. How we can serve him in different ways. Choices where the Lord has made, has asked commitments from us. Love the Lord your God with how much of your heart? All your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Choices, how much do I want to do for him, of course. And see, this is what uh, Joshua is telling the people. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the God your forefathers served beyond the river and in Egypt. Yeah, there were all kinds of false gods, the sun god, the river god, you name it, there's all kinds of gods there. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land that you are living, including the fertility gods, the Baal worship and the Asherah worship, uh, which was very perverted sexually. Throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord. Throw away the foreign gods and yield your hearts to the Lord. Maybe that's a decision we need to get serious about. What are your gods? Why are your idols? What are the things in your life that are squeezing God out of your life? It's apathy? Is it the TV? Is it the computer? Is it the cell phone? Are the movies that are out there? Uh, your work? How many things want your time that, you know, you just don't have time to pray anymore. You don't have time to read your Bible, do you? What are those things that the devil's using? What are your gods, the things that are first in your life, what are most important in your life? Where is your heart? Where is your treasure? Is it focused on the Lord and what he has done for you and his love for you? Or is that all these other things that are just gobbling up your time and you have nothing left, no more energy for him? You see, choices, the choices you make, are they honoring God as you use your time and the abilities he gives to you, your resources? What choices? Do you go honor and glorify him? Joshua chose to build his life on the Lord and his word. On the flip side of Joshua is the warnings that he gives here to everyone listening to his words. If you forsake the Lord, he will bring disaster on you and make an end of you. In other words, you leave the Lord outside of your life. And well, the words of one hymn writer puts it quite clearly. A home that is not wholly his. How sad and poor and dark it is. But not only for this life, but also for the life to come when you're faced with the darkness of the hellfire. Notice who takes the lead here. It's the man of the house. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. In the minds of many men, this thing called religion is for women and children, not for them. They've got better things to do. Hmm, how destructive it is. How destructive it is for any home when a man neglects or deserts his spiritual leadership of those in his care. By publicly making a commitment to the Lord, Joshua shows us what it means to be a real man. And by being a real man, I'm talking about being a godly man. Being a real man isn't the person that crushes beer cans on his forehead 
He's not the one that wants to show off his, his mighty strength, sexual prowess, his ability to make money, to have flashy cars, to be great in sports or whatever it might be. No, but rather the one who looks to his Lord for his example and guide and lives as one of God's children. The real man, the godly man, is the one that not only says, I and my household will serve the Lord, but rather that he lives that way also, lives that pledge of allegiance. We need more men like Joshua. Joshua was a busy man, leading God's forces. He was one of those two spies that 40 years before came back checking out the promised land and said, we can take it. Where the other ten spies said, no, impossible. No, this was a man of faith 40 years before, and now he's taking over the leadership. And yes, he had led these people through many battles. He was a busy man, but when it came to serving the Lord, he never forgot who his Lord was, what was first and foremost. His Lord came first in his life and in his home. Joshua was a spiritual leader in his home. And we need more spiritual leaders in our homes. We need men who will pray with their children, give them a good Christian discipline, loving discipline. Uh, fathers who are bringing their families to worship, who they themselves are grounded in God's word, whether it's opening up the Bible and devotions at home or whether it's uh, leading Bible classes here or being part of Bible classes in church that they're more concerned about the work of the church and saying, how can I serve you, Lord? What are the capacities? What are the gifts that you have given to me? And when you see men doing those things, you're seeing godly men, men that God will bless. After hearing Joshua's farewell speech, all the, all the people got on the bandwagon, you might say also. He says, uh, they promised, we too will serve the Lord because he is our God. But unfortunately, after Joshua had died and years later, we're told that they failed miserably to keep that promise. We're told they forgot and let the words of God slip from their hearts. How easy that is to do. Oh, I went to confirmation class. How much more do you still remember? Are you growing in grace and knowledge? Or is that letting it slip from your heart? Uh, you do know more than what you think you do. So uh, the Lord can bring those things back to memory, but you've got to keep getting into that word. See, they left the Lord because they chose not to get rid of their foreign gods. They still hung on to them. But what about us? Would we say, oh, as for me and my house, uh, we're going to have a good time and grab onto everything we can get here in this life. As for me and my house, God's not a priority. Once in a while, if we can worship him, that's okay. That's the thinking. That's not much of a priority, is it? You're putting him down away. Don't do that. If we're serious about our pledge and promise to serve our Lord and want happier homes and stronger families, then we need to have Christ-centered homes and really examine our lives to show him the glory that's due to him for all that he gives to us, the blessings of a great land, the blessings of a Christian home, church family, blessings perhaps a spouse and children, and the blessings go on and on. Can you still see? Can you still hear? We can just keep talking about his blessings day after day, how we need to thank him but how important it is to open up and read our Bible so that Christ's word dwells within us, to give us the strength to keep him number one in our life, to keep us coming to the Lord's Supper, for the assurance of forgiveness so that we can be forgiving people as he has forgiven us and loving people as he has loved us, and that he, through that word, can keep transforming us into the people he wants us to be. And as we do that, we certainly can and say along with Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Or as the hymn writer says, then here will I and mine today a solemn promise make and say, though all the world forsake his word, I and my house will serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>